Today, I want to talk about three of my favorite books surrounding the topics of simple living, homesteading, and the good life. Let's get into it. If you don't know me, I'm Spencer, and I like to talk about simple living, frugality, and ways to cut down on your technology usage. So I read a lot of different books. I try to read as a daily practice. I'm not a very fast reader. I read only a few pages a day, but I do try to read every single day. I never usually miss. But when I read, I usually try to read stuff around simple living, uh, frugality, the things that I talk about here, those are my actual interests. And I read a lot of books from a lot of different times, both authors new and old. Today I wanted to share with you a few of my favorite books on these subjects that I've read over the past couple of years and share a little bit of detail about each of them. So let's get started with number one. All right, so the first book that I wanna talk about today is Living the Good Life by Helen and Scott Nearing. Helen and Scott Nearing are some of the original Back to the Landers. Scott Nearing was born in 1883 and he lived all the way until 1983. He didn't get off the grid and stop living in the cities until the 1920s, I believe. He was actually like a radical academic who was kicked out of his position because he was such an outspoken critic of child labor as well as the First World War. When the Nearings had reached middle age, they bought some land out in rural Vermont and they ended up building a homestead there over the next several years. They tried to become as self-sufficient as possible. They tapped the maple trees on their property and made and sold maple syrup. They built all of their homes by hand. They tried to grow as much as their food as possible. They were vegetarians and they lived very austere, simple lives. Scott Nearing spent his entire adult life eating out of a wooden bowl with either wooden chopsticks or a wooden spoon. He was definitely intending to be austere. He was inspired a lot by Tolstoy through his life and he he tried to live as a renunciant, basically. The Nearings made a clear delineation between their wants and their needs. They determined what was necessary for them, and then they basically cut out everything else. You know, reading this book, I found it quite interesting to see how they separated their day. They were very regimented people, and they scheduled their day over four-hour blocks. I believe it was four hours of work in the afternoon, four hours of leisure time, like activities, whatever they thought was for the betterment of themselves, and then four hours dedicated to their community. The book book goes into a lot of detail. It starts off explaining what their reasons were for seeking the good life, why they were looking to leave the city and look to rural areas of America to find that good life. They then talk about the process of purchasing their land and actually building their house made of stone on that land. Later they talk about building a community, living for health, the way that they eat specifically. Note that they are vegetarian and they're going to talk a lot about the ethics of the vegetarianism lifestyle. So. Be aware of that and be prepared for that if you choose to pick up this book. And the final part of the book is they talk about the balance sheet. They go really into the nitty gritty of how much this type of operation cost them. They said that they were able to cover all of their expenses basically by doing things like the maple syrup business as well as Scott doing the odd talk and selling a book here and there. The Nearings lived for a very long time. Scott lived to be 100 years old and Helen lived to be I think like 95. When the 1960s hippie movement took hold, a lot of back to the lander young people took to the Nearings property. They actually came to visit and spend time with the Nearings and work with them to learn techniques from them about homesteading. So the Nearings became somewhat the elder statesmen of the back to the land movement of the 1960s. And that is really where they got a lot of their fame was from this book, Living the Good Life. It's important to note that Scott Nearing was a major academic figure at the time. Even when he was ousted from the academic institutions he had worked at, he traveled around giving talks on his kind of radical beliefs. So he was always kind of a radical figure, but eventually he just kind of withdrew and he made his homesteading life for himself and then wrote this book with the help of his wife, Helen. They worked on this together. The copy of Living the Good Life that I showed at the beginning is no longer in print. The version that you can get now is called The Good Life. This is it right here. And this actually has a second book in it as well called Continuing the Good Life. Later in their journey, when they were in Vermont homesteading, a ski resort was going to be built right around the corner from where they were living. They decided that they didn't want all the tourists and all the noise that was going to come from that being built. So they sold their property and they moved to Maine. And that's where they continued homesteading, hence the book Continuing the Good Life. This book has both of those combined into one thicker book and it's available on Amazon. I've put the link in the description. So in keeping with the theme of simple living, self-reliance, and homesteading, we're going to go a little bit farther back to a book from 1854, and that is Walden by Henry David Thoreau. 
So this is my copy of Walden. It's called Walden and Other Writings by Henry David Thoreau. I recently learned that Henry David Thoreau's name is actually pronounced more like the word Thoreau. I did a thorough job cleaning this house today, like that kind of thing. Um, sometimes I might say Thoreau, but I don't know. I've, it doesn't really matter. Just read the book. Thoreau released this book in 1854, but it actually takes place in the 1840s when he's just a young man. His older brother, John, had recently passed away and he decided to move onto a piece of land owned by his friend and mentor, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He built this cabin at Walden Pond by hand. He lived there for two summers and he compiled all of that work into this book, called Walden. Now many podcasting bros, people who fancy themselves to be thinkers, love to cite Thoreau's quote of the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. That is from like the first chapter of Walden and I think the most people who read that never really go beyond that first chapter. They just kind of skim that, cherry pick a few quotes and then they leave the rest behind. But I don't think that's the way to go. I think this book has a lot of value, a lot of really interesting nuggets throughout the entire text and it's important to just read this thing all the way through and I think you're gonna get a lot from it. I will concede that the first part of the book is very interesting, it's called Economy, and Thoreau basically breaks down his reasons for wanting to move to the woods, that he's basically seeking kind of a Spartan life and to see how simple he can get his life and still find happiness and still thrive. And he basically breaks down all the economic aspects behind doing this. He talks about exactly how much it cost him for all the components to build his house. He talks about how much all of his food supplies are gonna cost him for that year. And he talks about how much work it's actually going to take him to make all of that happen, to finance that. The interesting thing was Thoreau was talking about menial work, which wasn't going to get you a high wage. He's talking, I guess, what would be like minimum wage work here. And he was able to finance his whole year of living in the woods off of six and a half weeks of working. Now, of course, people are gonna say that's not possible nowadays, that we have so many other expenses that I couldn't do that. Well, keep in mind he is living in a place that's free. He's not paying rent. He's living on somebody else's property in a place that he built with trees, with stuff that was free. Actually, he didn't build it with trees. I think he bought somebody's collapsed cabin or disassembled somebody's cabin and used all the boards from it to make his own. But he did not spend very much money on this project and he didn't have a monthly expense of housing that he had to pay for. I mean, also back in the day, people only had like two to maybe like five outfits. So they had very little expenses as far as clothes. There was no streaming services. There was no cell phones. There were no internet. There was nothing to be paying for other than your food, your shelter, and your clothing. And books, of course, but I don't think Thoreau had very many books at the time. I think he was borrowing a lot from Emerson. Throughout the book, Thoreau then takes us through the different seasons of living in the cabin, talking about the cold winters where he stays inside and he makes friends with the fire, talking about the joy of cooking over an open hearth, and then talking about the different plant life and animals that he saw as he really took his time to walk around his property and get to know the actual species that lived there. Thoreau talks about the importance of solitude as well, the importance of separating yourself from the noise, from the hustle and bustle, and just having time to be with your own thoughts and to just take in what's around you. And that is something which we could certainly benefit from in our own lives, and that is like halfway through the book, so you gotta stick with it for a little while to get to that. So finally, I wanna just talk about a book that also focuses on simple living, homesteading, resilience, self-reliance, and frugality most importantly, but they tell you exactly how to do it, and they tell you in great detail that that is The Encyclopedia of Country Living by Carla Emery. This book is an encyclopedia. It is massive. Look at how thick that thing is. It is a massive, massive book. Carla Emery was a struggling mother in rural America. She was a back to the lander. She was trying to find ways to homestead, to homeschool her children, and to live her version of the good life, but on a tight budget because she did not have a lot of money. She was a farm girl. She had a lot of experience living rurally. She knew how to save money and how to pinch a penny. And she shares all of her tips with you in this book. And this book is extremely detailed. If you want a homestead, this is probably the only book that you're going to need to do that. This has information from buying the land, from how to pinch a penny, to how to grow crops, to how to kill an animal, to how to butcher an animal, to certain recipes to do with vegetarian or with an animal, to making cheese, to caring for a colony of bees. I'm starting to sound like Dr. Seuss or something, so I'll stop. But this book is honestly such a cool tool. It has so much useful information in here. I haven't even scratched the surface. I mean, I've read it a lot of times, but that is just how much stuff there is in here it's gonna take a lifetime to get all of this information. Now, I'm not living in my off-grid land yet. I am just
just trying to practice some self-reliance, some self-sufficiency and resilience here at home in the city. But these tips from this book are still very much applicable to me. Things like how to make your own bread, making your own cheese, how to effectively maintain a garden, how to mill your own flour, how to sharpen your own knives and axes, and even how to forage for wild food though I would recommend you probably get a little bit more help with that before you go and eat mushrooms off the ground. They call this book the original manual of basic country skills and wisdom, and I think that holds true to today. This thing is such a cool book. It's such a valuable resource. Definitely prioritize picking this up if you're interested in learning any of these skills or even getting it from the library if you just wanna learn a little bit, dip your toes in and then decide from there. So that's about it for today, guys. Just three of my recent favorite books talking about homesteading, simple living, resilience, and the good life. I hope you guys found this interesting. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of this video. If you have any books that you recommend or if you want me to expand on any of these books in single reviews, like a dedicated review, I'd be happy to do that as well. I wanna talk about some of the other books that I've been reading and enjoying as well and share them with you guys. And if you have any suggestions of things that I should read, let me know in the comment section. I'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.